Hi friends. I um, want to talk about a certain kind of birth today, a certain kind of a birth scenario. And um, I'm going to bring on a special friend to do that. Uh, birth is not always straightforward. It's not always simple. And one of the most powerful things that midwives do is figure out which people are low risk and which people are high risk and who to keep in our care and who to transfer um, and all those really important questions. So <clears throat> I just jumped on because somebody shared a picture with me that was like, wow. Um, and she's a good midwife friend of mine and it got me thinking. And anyway, I wanted to talk about that today. So um, let me see if I can uh, share this photo. Here's this amazing photo. Um, what does this photo tell you? And what do you believe about this photo? Or what do you believe about yourself about this photo? Um, what do you believe about midwifery because of this photo? <laughs> There's so much to talk about. So I'm going to bring on the midwife who was a part of this birth. And for those of you not in midwifery who don't fully understand, um, this is a, a brow presentation baby who eventually became um, a direct OP baby uh, with significant mech. Uh, not tiny, <laughs> not a tiny baby. Um, and this was over a very prolonged course of labor. So this is what we're going to talk about today. We're kind of in a case study. That's what we're in today. We're going to talk about something really kind of rough and edgy in midwifery. We're going to talk about choosing to stay and protocols mm -hmm. and timelines dysfunctional labor, funky baby positions, and choosing to keep going. Um, that really um, kind of heavy choice that exists out there because of the politics, right? So it used to be that midwives just stayed no matter what. Like we were their provider and whatever they needed for as long as they needed, we showed up. But then mm -hmm. politics happened and litigious mm -hmm. environments and licensing laws and all kinds of mumbo jumbo happened over the last, say, 100 years. And now mm -hmm. midwifery is a radically different place. And lots and lots of midwives are transferring clients that don't really want to transfer. They want to be served. Mm -hmm. But because of that midwife's right. law or comfort level or something like that, they have to go in. So mm -hmm. Lisa, before we get into this specific yeah. case study, um, will you just do a little intro about yourself? You're a midwife in California. Sure. Yeah. So I'm a midwife. I'm trying to get this like set up to where I can see like, sorry. Anyways. Okay. So I am a licensed midwife of California and I'm also a CPM and I also hold licenses in other states as well. Um, but California is, uh, the main state that I practice in right now. Um, I'll probably be practicing in California and Washington state mostly. Um, I've been around birth since, um, let's see, my daughter was born in 1993. So 1995, um, I come from kind of an old school background, Seattle midwifery school, but also apprenticeship based. Uh, I've worked with CNMs out of the hospital. Um, I've worked with CPMs. I've worked with unlicensed people. I was unlicensed practicing for a while. And then when I moved to California, I realized that I should probably cover my ass and get a license. Excuse my language. But see, that's the question. Um, does it and that's, cover your yes, ass? Yes, right. Like in some well, ways, doesn't that make you more vulnerable? And this is um, the kind of the crux of yeah, our conversation today. It It really is. And... California is an interesting state because they will go after you. They, they will actively jail you. They won't just like take your license from you, but they will a actively like prosecute you. And so yeah. I thought to myself, like when I came here, oh, I should like do this as like a protective measure. Um, also, I get, you know, I get to order meds, I get to or oxygen, antibiotics. I mean, you know, when my daughter gets a UTI, she's 30 now, um, and we run some labs and she can't get rid of it, then we go and we're like, 
um, I give her antibiotics, you know? So I, I definitely, anybody who's practiced with me, anybody who knows me knows that I go outside of my boundaries that yeah. the law has given me. So, yeah. um, so this and, is the crux of our conversation, yeah. right? It's like, Fly, you have yes. the experience to back up those choices and you have Correct. a clientele base that like demands those choices. Yes. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. but it's still kind of risky and it's still kind of rough. It so is. how do you go about making those choices? I decided a long time ago, I don't know when it was, but I decided a long time ago, Maybe, maybe like when I was born, maybe it's just like in me, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I've always been the kind of person who pushes things and, um, I lead by like my intuition and I lead by my experience. And I decided a while ago that if they come for my license, they can fucking have it. And if if something happens, be, that's like the worst thing to me would be that I didn't provide the care that I knew was appropriate for that client at that time. Right. So that to me, I decided was my number one thing. I was going to do that and the legal stuff would come after that. You I serve also, your clients. You don't serve yes. the government. Yeah. Yeah. I decided yeah. that. And then after that, in peer review, I say what happened. I say what I did. I don't hide from it. I'm not, I'm not one to, like, if, they, if something happened and somebody, like, the medical board came to me and was like, can I see your records? I wouldn't change my records. Right. I would, and I do paper charting at the birth centers and things. Of course I use like EHR systems, but I do paper charting cause that's just like what I learned and that's what I'm comfortable with. And oftentimes I don't have internet access either. So I'm doing paper charting anyways. So, but I, I decided that it was like, if that's what happens that they come for my license or they want to question why I did this then I honesty is the number one thing for me and I'm not going to fudge my records and I'm not going to say that I didn't know the baby was breech or yeah. I'm not going to do that. And right. So if I'm going to step into my own truth and hold myself accountable, even when we hold ourselves accountable, we have to also understand that there could be repercussions when they we're can. pushing and, yeah yeah when we're and pushing so like that what does that look like yeah. when you are deciding like i'm moving into hour 36 with this laboring client right or nothing's progressive this is dysfunctional right. but she's refusing yes. transport like how am yes. i saying okay yeah tell me tell me about that thought process so that thought process um is always there's two parts there's one, the personal me and like how that makes me feel like as a mom and as yeah. a, a person, a woman, like who cares about this family and about yeah. this baby, that part always is like, oh, okay, this could be the one that dies. It's my first thought and I think that the reason that I go there is because I want to quickly eliminate and move past that I want to quickly the fear, recognize the controlling that, fear yeah. yes quickly recognize that in birth we sometimes have death and that sometimes happens it happens in the hospital it happens out of the hospital it happens on the way to the hospital it yeah. happens, you know? And yeah. so if I It happens just, in like, pregnancy. Like it happens in, in pregnancy. In fact, this is October, National, you know, Infant and, yes. and Pregnancy Loss Month. Like yeah. it happens so much. Yes. The statistics mm -hmm. say one in four yeah. pregnancies end yeah. in loss. So yes. it's real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for real. saying that. And so I just go there. And anybody who knows me and practices with me, Emma, raise your hand here, can testify to the fact that I just 
um, when I'm like, this is what's happening, I just go hard. I'm like, all right, this is what's happening. We're going to deal now. So I erase that out of there, get that out of there, recognize that that could be the truth. Moving on. So then I'm like, okay, I give, I give my clients the informed consent. I give them the what, the if, the how, the why, all of the things. So in this mom's case, it was um, a uterine infection. Yeah, we're doing infection. a case study. This is great. We're moving into the case right. study. Go for it, girl. So, so for it. this mom, it was uterine infection, uterine There's acne, which can lead to hemorrhaging. Uh -huh. Um, these are all risks that you're time. giving her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She didn't have these. Yep. You're giving her risks. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, transport time to appropriate services. Um, infection in the baby's lungs because there was meconium. Because it's just like, this is just like, uh, when I came home from this, I was like, wow, that's like so many red flags. Um, <laughs> it's like, whoa, there's like, I, I counted on more than one hand. It was like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Six, seven, eight now. I was like, wow. Okay. So I, um, gave, gave her the risk that like her baby sounds good. Now baseline has jumped. It had jumped five points. Then it had jumped another five points. I was like, gave, you know, tried to explain that to her, what that meant. We obviously talk about these things in pregnancy. Some, some people want to talk about it more than others. This particular family, because they live two hours from any services on the coast where you have to drive through fog and mountains and valleys and more mountains and more valleys, they were really, they asked a lot of questions. So we talked about things quite a bit in their pregnancy. Wow, um, rural midwifery is something else, isn't it? Wow. It is. Like I... I, like somebody told my friend, I was talking to my friend today, she has a birth center in Virginia, and she, in 15 minutes, the EMS had this major hemorrhaging mom in their car going to the hospital that was three minutes away, and they were ready for her. Like, yeah. I, I, she can get I care just, in 15 minutes. Yeah. I'm like, it That's just so different. Yeah. It's so different. And when I work at the birth centers that I've been working at, cause I've been doing traveling midwifery, it's like that too. And yeah. it is, it is different, but, um, and the population that you're serving is different. Like yeah. it's, so I went over all the things, like if the baby starts to sound bad, we have to drive might have to call a helicopter, drive down to meet the helicopter. I've done that before. Um, all of those things. So it's like, then what you do is I left them alone for some time. I, I gave them, I always give them the speech. Like, I know that this might sound scary. I'm not saying that this is going to happen, but I would be remiss if I did not say that these things could happen. Give you true informed consent for your baby and your wife, your, you know, um, and you make the choice. And I will talk to you in a few minutes. If you have any more questions, please, please ask me. Like I make it very clear to them that like, hey, I'm not afraid of these things happening. I'm saying, that these things are things that you should be aware of. Because what they wanted to do, I offered transport in the evening at like 9 or 10 p.m. This was after, gosh, oh my gosh, here, let me get my, let me get my, um, my chart out. I offered transport. They wanted to wait until the morning. They were tired. He didn't feel and at okay this driving. point. Her contractions had basically they gone had away. They had stopped. Yeah, yeah. They and had she, stopped. her waters had released completely. Dysfunctional. <laughs> her waters had released mm -hmm. twenty four hours earlier. No, at this time it was we were pushing forty eight. We forty eight. So her waters had broke two days mm -hmm. ago. She'd waters had a round of, of mm -hmm. contractions, but then they had gone yeah. away. And you were saying yeah. this is dysfunctional. We should go to the hospital. And the clients are saying, we mm -hmm. want to rest. Well, yes, but there were other things. So when her water broke, she had meconium stained waters, not fresh, it's that mustard yellow. So, and it was not thick, it was watery, but it wasn't that like light, lovely, you know, straw. 
Yeah, um, it wasn't. No, it was mustard. Okay. And so I was like, okay, so that means that the baby had some sort of something going on, you know, three days ago, four days ago, something like right. that. And right. heart tones were good. Um, she, she started to go into labor at, I think, 10 hours, eight hours after, after rupture. After mm -hmm. rupture. And she got into this. And meanwhile, I was at another birth. So caught a baby at like 8 p.m., um, another prime up, and finished all that up, got on the road at 11.30 or 12 or something, and her labor pattern had picked up. And so I was like, great, by the time I get there, which was two hours away, um, I, she'll be cooking, and she'll be like five or six centimeters. This is wonderful. She's had time at home with her husband. And her stepdaughters. Yeah. And, and by the way, I told her that I would be talking about this case. She's yeah. totally fine with that. Got full so, informed consent for this yeah, part. Full, yeah. Thanks, yes. everyone. <laughs> and so, um, so I get there. And yeah, she's like, can you check me? And I was like, sure. I, sure, I'll check you. She was five centimeters. She was doing great. She labors throughout the evening. You know, I set everything up, do vitals. Oh, she was 100%. Like, I, okay. you know, 90. Yeah. Like, yeah, she was 100%. almost there. ready to ready yeah. to open. Yeah, okay. Yes, ready to open. Totally great cervix stuff going on. I could feel a little bit hurt. The station was like minus one. So yeah. um, and still some labor course, to go. Still yeah. some labor to go. So I'm like, great. I'll do some vitals, set things up, and then I'll go and sleep on her sofa. And um, it's a small place. Um, and then I'll just listen to baby. I'll let my assistant sleep and call her in the morning. So that's what I did at five in the morning. She wanted me when I came in to listen to baby, she wanted me to uh, check her again. She was like eight, nine centimeters. I was like, wonderful. And baby was station zero. So I called my assistant, my assistant gets there. And then when she was there, like, doing things she um you know just keeping an eye out feeding the dog you know that kind of stuff she I slept I slept for like a good three four hours solid and I woke up and I was like which we need to do as midwives okay. you need to have enough people so that you can yes. rest that's really yeah. important midwives yeah student midwives uh, totally no. yeah and mm -hmm. I thought to myself why do I not hear her pushing <laughs> she was like why hasn't anybody why, woken me up? <laughs> why has nobody woken me up? Is the yeah, baby, right. And then I'm like, is there crying? Was the baby? Did she have fetal ejection response and I just <laughs> slept through all this? No, that's not what was going on. So I get in there and my assistant has done lovely charting. She's a great midwife, Shauna Neely. She's new to this area. And um, I know Shauna. Wow. She's, yeah, Small she world. does know you. Yeah, midwife. yeah, okay, she's cool. great. I'm so happy to be able to like give her to the community that I'm leaving. I feel That's so beautiful. much better yeah, she's, about it. She's, she's, she's great. She fits right in where you are. She's a yes. ass rural midwife. She okay, does. Cool. She really awesome. does. And so, and both of us are like, we're used to rural birth and it's like, yeah. we're in it. Well, like we're in it like with yeah. the parents. It's not, you know, so anyways, the day goes on. The mom's eating and hydrating and all these things. And I'm like, contractions. like, can you, her contractions are longer now and further apart. And so I'm like, uh -huh. okay, we're going to move into pushing soon. The baby is just in a funky position and probably needs to like, you know, move around or something. And, you know, and so then she'll start pushing soon. So I, she wants me to check her again. So I check her again. And this time when I check her, which was... Um, now we're at, she's ruptured for 24 hours, 26 hours. It's noon the next day. And I'm like, okay, so there's something going on here. I, all I, I can't feel any sutures. So you got, you got this roundness and there's no sutures. There's no fontanels. There's, I'm like, that ain't right. 
Like normally <laughs> right, right. you can like, I'm like, normally you can feel something. So then I'm like, okay, maybe it's just cap it. I'm just feeling cap it. No, it's All right. hard. So anyone who's watching, um, give <laughs> us a thumbs up. If you have ever done a vaginal exam and been like, that ain't right. I don't know what I'm feeling. I don't get it. What is All it? right. So hands up if that's ever happened for you. That's yes. really important that we normalize some of these like some of yes. these disasters. Yeah. Okay. So yes. then, so you yes. thought, okay, so let's think nice. through what you're thinking. You're thinking I should feel some kind of, of suture line, fontanelle, something. I don't. Something. Could it be cap it? Could it be cap it? That's, That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm Could like, it okay. be breach? Could it be breach? Could, mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. That's one mm -hmm. thought, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then you came up with the third thought, which is like, maybe it's because of a severe malpresentation. So tell us mm -hmm. about this. So I asked her, I said, is it okay if I feel around and feel behind the baby's head or presenting part? Do a really thorough Do a really sweep. good. Yeah, uh -huh. And she was like, oh, yeah. She's like, that's totally fine. I was like, okay, great. So I do a really good feel. And all I feel is like hard, like just hard, nothing. <laughs> And then I feel huh. in the back and I'm like, okay, that's not cap it. I can't feel behind it. She's still nine. She has this like little lip, it's not really swollen. But I'm like, okay, can I feel behind that? Nope, that's not cap it. I go all the way around and I go to the back with my fat little fingers and <laughs> I feel this thing that I'm like, okay, that's really hard. And then that's soft. Hmm. What is that? So then I'm like feeling in there like this, right? And then I realize a light goes off and I'm like, this is a brow presentation. All forehead. You're feeling the frontal bone. All forehead. I'm uh -huh. feeling this. When I'm going, I'm feeling this. Uh -huh. All forehead. And then at the back, what I'm feeling is her fat little neck fold. So I'm feeling the occiput that's smushed up against her little fat roll when on you her swim neck. off to the side yep yep yeah, when i swim okay. off to the side i can feel that and then i can feel uh -huh. it over here on this side too because her and head I'm is like... tilted back yeah she's deflexed mm -hmm. okay she's got right it mm -hmm. yeah so oily doula is saying so, no wonder she's not pushing right right there's no there's no correct pressure to make the pushing urge correct. yep okay yeah because it's not round it's like this yeah it's like, totally and long. so and then i was like do you know what I call it now? I made I made a funny. I call okay, it the Viking it. presentation. A Viking. It's the Viking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. just like oh, you know, just this like, oh, just this so. like <laughs> nomadic, like just this head first, bull head headed. First, I'm gonna drill ooh. into the world. I'm gonna like just this. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I call it the Viking presentation. Fantastic. So I'm like. It's just this big five head, you know? I'm like, great. Five. So then I'm like <laughs> thinking like maybe I can. Okay. So now I go into mode of problem solving. So I tell her, I said, so, you know, your baby is, is coming into the canal with this as a presenting part, not round. It needs to be nice and round or oval, oblong, something. So let's, let's get you moving. Let's get the stuff going. So we do all this stuff. We do, we do all the spinning, spinning babies. babies. All the we things. We do yeah. the, mm -hmm. yeah, the other maneuvers. We do the, um, the contraction. What is it called? Where you lay on the bed. Reverse cowgirl or something. Or, yeah, reverse cowgirl. Yeah. I don't yeah. ever remember these names. I'm like, I'm I call like, it rotisserie chicken. We're going to yeah, do the rotisserie like, chicken. Because we're just going to flip yeah. the mom in all the ways. Yeah. It's a rotisserie exactly. chicken. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, hang her so from let's... the ceiling. Yeah, yeah exactly. hang her from the ceiling. I thought yeah. to myself, good God, like, yes, back that baby up. Yes. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let's just get her out of there. Also, how she's been wedged in there for a while. And because I can't feel any cabot or I can't feel anything, I'm not exactly sure how far wedged in she is. Like, I'm estimating the baby's weight is between seven and a half and eight pounds. She was eight one. And the mom has so much room in her pelvis. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. we could just even if she's wedged in there and 
So then we go through those things. Baby is not moving out of the pelvis. She's like, no, I'm coming mm -hmm. this way. This is the way mm -hmm. that I'm coming. Mm -hmm. And so then I was like, okay, well, let's try, um, let's try some ramping. Let's see if we can get, if I okay, can get Okay, so this her. is, I wanted you to explain this. So for, for okay. those of you who are new midwives, um, there are maneuvers that midwives do inside uh, during an exam, during the process right. of helping babies born that are not publicized and are not widely known. But we all kind of know right. and they're not talked about a lot. Right. So yeah. will you explain what ramping is for you? Because a lot of people won't know what this means. Okay. So ramping is where you have the pubic arch, right? This, this is the pubic arch. And you have the baby's head is here, right? And lots of times you'll have some cervix there or something. You're not trying to get rid of the cervix. What you're doing, you call it ramping or bridging. So you are applying a counter pressure between the pubic bone and the presenting part, which really the only reason you would use this is because of a head. I mean, I, a malpresentation, you know, a, a malpresentation. Yeah. It's not yeah. going to be a breach. It's not going to really be effective because it's soft breach by yeah. are soft and they move through. So you're bridging between the head and the pubic bone. And you're, what you're doing is you're encouraging flexion. You're encouraging right. either flexion or rotation or hopefully both. <laughs> and this takes a while. This like, is not instant. It takes a while. It is so explain, not instant. explain. So you're going to, this is internal. You're going to do it a sterile glove and move and you're going to put your fingers inside. With informed and then you, consent. Definitely with consent, informed consent. You know, yeah. definitely informed consent. And you'll explain. keep your fingers in for how long? This mom tolerated. So you can't feel them anymore? Yeah. <laughs> Your fingers will go numb. 30 minutes, 45 I'm, minutes. I am telling you. Yeah. Like, you you're, like, you're just fingers. like, yeah. uh, can somebody yeah. pull my finger? You, it's, <laughs> there's, there's like, you're just like, oh, my God, I can't. Yeah. It's, yeah. And you know what's interesting to me is that um, not only do babies, you're not pushing on a fontanel or something like that. So you're pushing on a hard part, and you're not pushing a lot. What, nope. what you're doing, it's kind of like when you're resolving a lip that's just persistent yeah. and won't go away for whatever just reason. Holding, just pressure. You're just holding. And yeah. really what it is, is you're holding space. Mm. It's, it's another way of holding space. Mm. You're just like, hey, I'm here and this is not the way to you do this. You can't come this way. Cause there's a Don't block. Do this you anymore. have to go a different way. Yeah. Yes. You're creating like, artificial roadblocks, I think. So yes. that they take yes. a, a detour. They take a different route. Yes. Yeah. I love this. Sometimes we babies do are smart. The, yeah. They're very smart. And sometimes yeah. we do this from the back and this is called yes. creating a false pelvic floor. And these are all yes. techniques I that midwives that use. Yeah. And I yes. just love what you, I love <laughs> what you described. Um, ramping um and i call it roadblock but it's the same kind of yeah. idea of like ramping bridging roadblock creating yes. mm -hmm. creating a um a detour so that they don't yes. stay on the path that they're on which is obviously yeah. dysfunctional and non-productive so we, we yeah. divert them mm -hmm. yeah and it takes them a minute it's like yeah takes them, and or i really think too it's like <laughs> yes in this case it took two hours um, so yeah, it was a long, yeah. And not only that, but yeah. So then the story continues. So then the baby, I could feel a shift in the baby's presentation. So then I was like, okay, hands out. Let's have you left side lie and rest. Let's let the baby, let's let them navigate. Let's let everybody like yeah. navigate, regroup. It's like when you're at Six Flags and you lose people in your, in your group and you're like, okay, back we, need to the meet, we need to meet yeah. back at the point where we're supposed to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. It's like the emergency, like whatever. So then we all like, now it's evening. I let my assistant after that, she wanted to nap. The mom wanted to nap. I was like, great, go ahead and nap. Out like a light, no contractions. I was like, awesome. This is great. She's going to have no contractions. She's going to sleep and she's going to wake up after a couple hours and push her baby out. Is that what happened? 
It is not what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go back. I want to go back and really come into your mind because the point of this conversation is partly a case study and we're partly hearing of our story, which is great, but it's also right. trying to get behind the scenes of what you chose to do. So, so many right. midwives would be mech stained water, ruptured for 24 or 48 plus, dysfunctional labor, huge long pauses with no contractions, contractions that are ineffective, having hands in doing manipulative moves for two plus hours. A lot of midwives mm -hmm. would be like, if this doesn't bring progress, we're going in. So why did you not mm -hmm. do that? Um, because she needed rest. How did you know? Um, I needed rest. We all needed a freaking break. It was like, we just all needed a break. Like, so one break is to go to the hospital. A lot I of don't midwives see it like that. run into exhaustion and they say, yeah. and if I can't do it, you can't do it. We're going to the hospital. So explain yeah. this place. Cause this yeah. is a really crucial place of, of resting yeah. instead of transporting. How did you know that was okay to do? Um, fetal heart tones, um, continue to have good variability in Great. my mind the baby changing position was progress. Great. Um, the mom wanted to stay. She was not asking for pain meds. She was not the asking client to go is in. requesting this. Mm -hmm. Neither pathway. was the partner. Great. Nobody Everyone's was on the same saying page. that. Yep. Everyone's on the same page. Um, the baseline had jumped by like five points, but like, come on. Like really, that's acceptable. We're, that's that's accept allowed. Yeah. First of all, yeah. it's acceptable, and second of all, good because I was just doing all this stuff to you. Your right. baseline should jump. You should be. Excited. You should be a little stimulated. You should yeah. be a little like, what are you yeah. doing to me? Exactly. Like right, you know. Exactly. And, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean that's like to me that's like a good sign. Um, yeah. Also, um, it just felt like that's what we needed to do. There's experience. an intuition. There's an experience and, and, and an intuition. intuition. So how long did you rest yeah. for? Um, regionally due to those factors. Oh gosh, the environment. I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, yeah. if that's okay. Cause, cause at one point we did get in the car, but the baby was not born at the hospital. <laughs> Oh, this is so great. So, I want to hear yeah. this whole story. So, so yeah. keep telling. So, um, okay. So what we did was I sent my assistant smart. home. Yeah. Yep. So she went to bed, like she emptied her bladder, did a round of vitals, all of those things. Right. And then, um, laid down and put her husband in there. The grandpa came to get the stepkids, which were 12 and 16. And they were kind of mulling around, but they were like out hiking down by the river and then would come back yeah. and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And my assistant had this thing to do like 20 minutes away. So I was like, go do it. You planned it for like a week. Go do it. I left. I asked them, the husband, I left and I went down to the beach. Mm -hmm. um, I got a snack and I went down to the beach and I combed the beach and I got I back. love this. I love this. And I just want to say, uh, this is one of my strongest quotes in all my clinical classes. And I, mm -hmm. I love that you do this as well. And so I just want to say it to all you new midwives or student midwives, do not attend birth full time. Even when you're rural and yeah. in the country and you can't leave her house, do not sit and stare at her belly for hours and hours and days and mm -hmm. days. You yeah. lose perspective. You lose yeah. the ability to make clinical care decisions yeah. when you're like this, right? You yeah. have to get some distance mm -hmm. to really yeah. be able to be the clinical care provider. So I love mm -hmm. that you did a round of vitals, yeah. tucked them into bed and stepped out, went and cleared your head, beach combing, yeah. fresh air, a snack. So important. Yeah. So thanks for sharing and I, that. Yeah. And I called a really good friend of mine who's a midwife in Virginia, Adriana Ross. She owns River City Midwifery. Awesome. And we like, we're getting our licenses together. Like we had both been practicing unlicensed for like a decade. And then we're like, okay, maybe we should try this licensing thing out so we can get meds or whatever. And so then we met at this birth center and 
in Utah and then we worked together for quite a bit of time and awesome. like we had a just bond. stayed friends forever yeah We've, forever yeah and yep. we will call each other like she'll call consult. me and she'll be yes yeah consult or just download like yep if she calls me at three in the morning, I know she's going to be crying on the other end. Same with, yeah. same with me. So yeah, I called her. This is heavy work. She, you need those kinds um, of people. Yeah. yeah, totally. She was like, and I knew it. She's, she's like, you have to transport these people. You go back there and they're still nine centimeters in there. You got to transport these. You know what this could look like. Like, you got to take care of yourself. You still have people you're on call for. I still have two more people I was on call for. She's like, you know, she's just really, she's like, you're, you did everything. You have given these people so much time. Like, by now, she's been at nine centimeters for, like, 18 hours. And, you know, she's like, it's okay. Like, it, it, she, you know, it's okay. You're a good midwife. Like you've done. Yeah. So she like, pep oh, that's me. such a good pep talk. And you're yeah. so at that crux. We've been in yeah. such a dysfunctional labor pattern that she's been nine centimeters yeah. for 18 hours. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've been at those births too. Yeah. And with baby's fine and mom's fine and wants to keep going right. with supportive people. Like, why not? Why not try it all the right. way? But at what yeah. point do you make that call? At what point yeah. do you say enough yeah. is enough? Yeah. 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 And we had even tried, like, at some point in time, she had felt, she was, like, pushing involuntarily. She tried. She grunted a little bit. She, she was yeah, grunting. She and, she, and I was like, just go for it. Whatever. Try. Like, let's yeah. see if maybe that can help move yeah. baby in different positions. So, I mean, we had, we had tried things. So I get back there two and a half hours later. She had had a nice nap. She was eating dinner. This was at nine o'clock at night or something like that. Um, so we're at 36 hours, something, maybe a little longer ruptured membranes. She had been nine centimeters since that morning. Yeah. So, I was like, I just kind of entered this space kind of like you do when you come to a birth for the first time because mm -hmm. reset, yep. reset. And so I get in there. She has no contractions, none, zero, nada. Uh -huh. She is uh -huh. nine centimeters. I can now feel cap it. Now okay. I can feel cap it. Now I'm like. Baby is LOT, kind of good flexion, trying to figure out her LOA, OA, anything besides the brow presentation. Please don't turn breach. Maybe yep. that's the way out. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just like. So is she in a resting phase or is she in a super dysfunctional labor and her body is quitting on the labor, right? This is that the, is the question. Balance. That is the yeah. question, right? Yeah. So at that point. She's like, okay, well, I know that I need to have, I, I'm basically like, okay, we're starting back at ground zero here. It's like you're nine centimeters, but in your first phase of labor, like, let's wrap hmm. our head around that. Hmm. Let me wrap my head around that. Oftentimes I'll say stuff. I've been known to just like go outside and Channel. talk to myself. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> Emma's like, Emma, my student once again, or Shauna, she's like, Oh, you talk to yourself. I was like, oh, yeah, like a crazy person. Yeah, I'm like, I would just go outside and be like, what is going on? Like, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to give him the informed consent. We, you have to have contractions to have a baby. Um, you got to have that. <laughs> this seems like, like so basic. Rule number but one. I, I love that you have to have one. contractions to have a baby. This is how you start so, your informed. We're not currently having contractions. We're not so, currently. So, what would you like to do about this? Yes, these are this our is options. True informed decision making. I love this about you. Mm -hmm. yeah. what? No pressuring, no scare, no fear mongering. Just yep. like here is the truth. Let me walk mm -hmm. you through it. I love yep. it. So she immediately asks the perfect question: How do I get contractions? Okay. Great question. You can use your breast pump that you paid eight hundred dollars for. That's sitting okay. in your washroom. It's a great breast pump. Put okay. them both on there and get it going. 
you can't, she can't have sex, but I'm like, you can mess around. You can, yeah, have an you orgasm. Know, you can mess around. Yeah. You can have an orgasm, external orgasm. Like, you guys could do that. You could um, try some herbs, but yeah, you know, we could do that with the breast pump. We could do that with the self pleasuring or whatever, you know, the mess around and find out kind of thing. And then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know, I, so I'm listing all these things. I was like, we could rub your belly with castor oil and essential oil and get it going. Yeah. In my mind, I'm like, oh my God, if I have to do that the whole time she's pushing, uh, hemorrhage, my arms are going to yeah. hurt. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. like, yeah. can I pick her up if I need to move her at the end of that? How long is yeah. this going to go on? But I'm just like, whatever. So I'm just telling her, she says, I want to use the breast pump. I don't want to mess around with my husband. I don't want any herbs. Um, uh, okay, um, go do that. So she goes and she does that. She sticks those suckers on there, full speed ahead, and nothing. An hour and a nothing. half goes by, no contraction. She gets like a wow. mild contraction. So Why? for everyone she watching, poop, so she pooped again. She had been pooping. It's like the contraction was just from her needing to poop. So. Yeah. It wasn't yeah, well, actually so, like a real contraction. So this is and such now she's an tired. important point. So, so this, is, this is when the receptor sites are all completely saturated. Yeah. So she does not have a problem making enough oxytocin. She has a problem with her receptor sites being mm -hmm. saturated. She cannot mm -hmm. have more contractions because all the uterine receptor sites are full. This happens yeah. with hospital inductions. This is why you yeah. sometimes see them turn off the Pitocin and wait six hours and then try yep. again. Mm -hmm. This can happen at home births too. Um, her mm -hmm. uterus has been flooded with oxytocin produced yeah. from her natural brain, caused all these contractions that the mm -hmm. gate got the baby to where it is and then mm -hmm. needed to rest. So yeah. yeah, hemorrhage is absolutely a risk when we have this situation yeah. because the uterinatony. oxytocin is not as effective. Mm -hmm. The uteronatomy is real. Uh -huh. yeah. um, maternal exhaustion is real. Those yeah. maternal mm -hmm. vital signs changing. Fetal mm -hmm. uh, distress is real. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All of these things are definitely in the front of your mind. So an hour and a yeah. half pumping, mm -hmm. no change. You go, okay, mm -hmm. oxytocin was not the problem. What else mm -hmm. can we do? Mm -hmm. So that's when I brought up the transport. I said, I want to talk to you about going in. Well, this is not and... the first time you brought up transport. No, it's not. But this is the time when she, she paid attention. But this is the serious conversation uh -huh. like uh -huh. tone of voice changes it's a little more like this is what you hired me for like right so I said to them um I gave them the scenario of what it looks like if we transport now versus what we tra if we transport later and the reason for transporting later could be several different reasons right Right now, it's because you have no contractions, you need some rest, you need, you know, an IV bag, which I was like, do you want an IV bag of fluids? No. She's annoyed now. She's like, she's annoyed with her own body. She's annoyed. She's just annoyed. And she's like, why is my body doing this? And I'm like, because you need to rest. Mm -hmm. Your body's doing this because it needs a break. Mm -hmm. it's been pushed to the brink and it's like, leave me alone, baby. Mm -hmm. Leave me alone. Yeah. Midwife, leave yeah. me, everyone leave me the f alone, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it can stay that way for a while and pick back up. I've seen that rarely. It can happen. I've seen it, but it can yeah. happen. Yep. You know, and that's how I tell Depends on that. how long you're willing to wait. Yeah. Right. And it depends on how much reserves baby has. But yeah, mm -hmm. it can happen. Uh-huh. So I tell them, it can also look like this, which I've also seen, you know, which is like the helicopter transport because of fetal distress. Yeah. Um, uterine acne, major hemorrhage, helicopter yep. transport, 911, by manual yep. compression. Um, a shit show basically and I, a, sh mm -hmm. a shit show which mm -hmm. I'm 
like at this point in my career, I'm like, I don't know how many more shit shows I have left in me. I, I got some more left in me, but I'm like kind of, they're narrowing down. Yeah. And so, you know, and I just, you know, I told her, I just told him all the things. And I said, you know, if we go now, they, when we go in, so the hospital situation. So somebody yeah, asked me that, that earlier. Mm -hmm. So in my County, we have a small hospital. It has like maybe 10 beds. There is no anesthesiologist on staff. Um, we do not have a NICU. Oh God, no. I, it's I basically probably, a home birth. It's basically a home birth, but they're shoving all the pharmaceuticals down your face and the monitors. And yeah. it's like, it's really like kind of old school hospital. It, uh -huh. Not like the good old school hospital, you know, like, 1950s like, high school. High school yeah. High school, and like, yeah. And like, you know, the labor, like the, the IBCLC is like, grab the baby's face and shove it on your boob. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. So we can go there and that's an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, or we can go to a different hospital. That's two hours, two hours and 15 minutes. And they have a NICU and they are home birth friendly and they have an anesthesiologist on staff. So they're not like, when there's an anesthesiologist on staff and a higher level NICU, what you get is you get patients, at least from mm -hmm. where I have been. Agreed. Because they're not like, oh, God, if something happens, we have to call Dr. James, and it's going to take him 15 minutes to have his coffee to come down. And we're going to yeah. have to knock her out with the anesthesiologist from the foot surgery over here. Yeah. Like they, you know, it. They, yeah. It just buys you more tolerance. Everybody breathes deeper because the mm -hmm. system's already in place. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. did you choose to so, go to start to transport towards this uh, more friendly hospital? She said, they said um, that they wanted to go in the morning, that they wanted to wait. <laughs> so how did you feel about this? This is 9 p.m. after. Un no, now untold. it's 1030. Oh, now 1030 it's 30 p.m. Mm -hmm. because I gave them their time and in the they second had some night questions. Uh -huh. Yes. In the second night and they had some more questions and I was very patient with them. And I mean, inside myself, I'm like, inside myself, I'm like, please say yes, please say yes. But you know, I didn't come off a good poker face, a good poker face. Don't play poker with me in Galveston. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then, lose. um, <laughs> you will lose, sucker. I talk to scared pregnant women with a smile. You will lose. <laughs> so they decide that they want to stay. So I said, okay, I've written down in your chart all the things that we went over, and I need you to sign it. And the husband looks at me, and he says, what happens to me if I sign this and something bad happens? Huh. Huh. Uh. And this is actually the moment where I lost my patience. And I was like, first of all, I think it's because it was a dude. I think it's because it was the partner. If it was a partner who was a female, I probably would have had the same. I don't know what it was. Maybe, maybe my blood sugar was low. But this is when I was like, I got stern in my voice. And I looked, I turned to look at him with my pen in my hand. And I... I looked at him and I said, what happens is you take responsibility for your family yeah. instead of forcing it upon me. Wow. Because if you don't sign this, I'm not staying. There you go. And he looked at me and he was like, oh, I was like, this is your choice and your wife's choice. This is not my choice. And I will not be held accountable for the choice that you're making after everything that I've done for you and your family. And wow. if you make this choice and you sign here, sign here and date it. And time then, stamp it. Yeah. Yeah. Date it, time it, like the whole thing, like a legal document, then I can't be here for you anymore. Yeah. Because you're out on the limb. So this yeah. is the main I can, focus I can go to jail. of, yeah, totally. Yeah, I can go to main... jail. I could, yeah. this is like, yeah. And he was like, oh God, I'm, 
I, I had no idea that you could go to jail. And I was like, mm -hmm. defensive yeah. charting is what it's all no. about. And so for those of you that are new to midwifery wisdom, just a little shout out. We have a defensive charting course. And this Take is it. the main focus of it is like, how do you protect yourselves in these really out there moments yeah. so that you know that you aren't going to be the one hanging for the yeah. outcome? Just like you said, yeah. I, am, I love how clear you are. Yeah. And I think midwives need to stop sugarcoating some of these more really rough realities of ours yeah. to make the clients feel better. If you're yeah. in it together with that client, they need to have the full reality. Just like you yeah. need their full reality, you need that baby's and that, that birther's full reality, yeah. they need to have your full reality. And that if you violate your state licensing laws, mm -hmm. you, go, you get in trouble. And that's really important. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I do it with so, three babies too. <laughs> yeah, same thing. I don't like, know, this all of it. I, this is of that. scary. Yeah, let's be clear I'm like, about this. This is because really like the one, so the agreement that I've made with my husband, my partner, is that I won't take responsibility for other people's choices. He's no. like, if you can promise me that, then I will never not stand by you being a midwife. Because this we started, husband. I started, yeah. yeah, this is my husband. I was going, I was doing prerequisites and I was a doula when we met and I had already had my daughter. So I was already in like, this is, I mean, and there was a lot of other like fuck around and find out parts about me, which, you know, he knew <laughs> and anybody who knows me knows, you know? And so he was like, but I was like, that was the one thing. And this was before I practiced unlicensed. It's before I was licensed. He knew it. He was like, from, he was like, don't take responsibility for other people's choices. Stand yeah. by them, do your yeah. work. But if you can promise me that, I will never ask you to leave midwifery. And I promised him that, and he has never yeah. asked me. <clears throat> and defensive charting, which requires yes. you to get mm -hmm. consent, refusal from the people you're serving yes. for exactly when you're going outside of the mainstream, outside of the, the, yeah. the, the care mm -hmm. plan, outside of protocols. That's totally. really, really important. So it they totally sign important. this document. They, they sign the stay document. for the second night. They go to yes. sleep. They sleep all yes. night. They sleep all night. No contractions. Nothing. No, she, I think she might've had. So I wake up, I, I continue to do vitals every three hours. I told my assistant, stay home. If she starts pushing, I need you to come. I need you to be rested. So stay home. Because, you know, now I'm thinking I could catch the baby. She's probably going to have a third degree repair. I'm probably going to have to transport her anyways. Great. Right. Or there's so much she's going to have this, like, hemorrhage. So, like, I so need many her pieces. rested. Yeah. I can be rested. So I go to bed. The first stint that we do, because she's having no contractions, and her vitals are good and the baby's vitals are good. I set my alarm for three hours. Uh -huh. I debated with myself about that. Maybe I should, I was like, you should be listening every hour because you know, she's in, she's in labor. And I was like, actually, she's not in labor. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> so then I was yeah, like, see, oh yeah. This protocols. is like yep. vitals, right? So yeah. three hours, got three hours sleep. Wake up, go in there, everything's fine. And now when I listen to heart tones, I don't do this like, din, din, din. no, 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 no. I oh, listen Lisa. if there's no oh, Lisa, I'm getting the clue that, we're, that, that Instagram is counting down. So <clears throat> uh, uh, um, 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 I think we're going to have to, can you tell it in, in a minute and a half? I think we're going to have to I don't, do a second one. I think we're going to have to launch again. We might have to do a second one. We're going to have it's, to launch no, again. No, because... Then she, the nighttime goes by, we decide to transport, and then we have a detour. She ends up giving birth at my other client's house because Wait she's Wait a second. This is when it amazing. gets so exciting. Wait. So you're driving. Yeah. Contractions come back. So we, the next morning, we leave. To somebody's house? The next morning, we leave, and we're driving, and we get- we get in, we get halfway there and we get into this little valley called Anderson Valley. And there's a grange there. I don't know if you look it up, if you don't know what that is. And he pulls over into the grange and she jumps out like a freaking hot potato. And I'm like, what's going on? So I pull in and she's like, 
got the grips of the back of her car and she's squatting and she's like, Ugh! I was like, pushing. Oh my God. What in the world is happening? So then she was like, can you check me? I was like, yes, I can check you. Now I feel lots of cap it. I can feel, I can actually feel the baby like, oh, okay. The baby has, baby is still We're L-O-T. having a baby. We're having slightly a baby. flexed. I'm like, okay. I'm like feeling over here. I'm like, oh, this is good. This is good. This baby is coming in a weird position. So I go over there. Um, and as I'm like assessing, like, okay, what options do we have? And I'm like, okay, we could go into, I don't want to go back home to where she was because it's a, it's kind of a long drive, you know, it's further away. It's further away than where yeah. we had gotten. Right. And, and then also I was thinking like Anderson Valley, there's like a high, a main highway yep. and it's really easy. If something happens postpartum, it's pretty you easy get to, to transport hospital. her. Yeah. So you're closer. So where are closer. you? You're in a grange I, you're in somebody's house. I, yeah. That's not so theirs? a grange. Uh, so a grange is where like farmers meet. There's like farmer. Like look it up. I don't know. How do you describe? Like a, do you know what a grange community is? Like, center for rural. yeah. It's yeah. a community center for rural rural folks, and it's centered around like farming, and yeah. you know that kind of thing. So they and pulled so over into this like community. I pulled over hall. into the. He pulls over into this parking lot. And I pull in next to him. She hops out. She's pushing. I can feel the baby is lower. Um, she's no, she's complete. It's all like, right? Mind you, an hour and a half before that, she had no contractions. None. And so she I had maybe the longest them. resting period we've ever heard of. It ended up being. 28 hours at nine. Yeah, I think it was 28 hours at nine centimeters. Yeah. And a good 10 hours with no contractions. Yeah, 12. 12 hours with no 12 contractions. Hours. Yeah, because yeah. like 10 o'clock, <clears throat> 10, 10 30 at night, and then we didn't actually leave her house the next day. Oh, yeah. So when we get to my other client's house to have the baby, it was 10 30 a.m. Wait, wait, how did so, you, so hold on. This is just, everyone just give us the wow emoji. Like what is going on? So you get in a car after convincing them for all this time with no progress, like it's time to go to the hospital. You start driving, you're in a car. Yeah, because she still had no contractions and she started no actually getting worried. She was so you like, get okay. behind her. You guys drive, drive along mm -hmm. this two hour transport. Oh, but first right? they packed their car like they were going camping. <laughs> Okay. I was like, no, I mean, like, we're getting in the car now. Like, I no, now I mean, we're getting not in now. the car now. So they make her a bed in the back with her yoga mats and the all the things and her favorite blankie, which was bringing her comfort. So like, that's great. Important. Okay. The kids bring their a water filter full of stuff. Anyone? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. No, there's his get out back. He I has thought a get there out must bag be a water filter. Because, yeah, I know about yes. girl midwifery too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. He has a get out yep. bag. We get a babysitter for the dog. Oh, yeah. We That's have important. three bags yep. of food. Everyone yep. has breakfast. It yep. was so long that all by myself, I packed up all my shit, cleaned up all my stuff, finished my charting. <laughs> faxed over everything to Santa Rosa, which they're like, wait a second, aren't you the midwife who called like 14 hours ago? And I'm like, I cannot yeah. even begin to tell you this. I just need you to read my chart when I get there. They're like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I will call you when we're leaving. But she oh basically is not in labor anymore. And they're like, that's weird. And I was like, mm -hmm, same girl, same. <laughs> so then, yeah, I take a shower. <laughs> Because I run out of things to do. Waiting for the shower. family to get out the door. Yes. Oh, Finally my God. I mean, where are the laugh emojis? This is hilarious. This it's is insane. what happens. People give, give Lisa, insane. like, she is the best birth storyteller ever. Okay, so you're driving along, and then they pull over the to the line. range in a parking lot. Pull you over. come out. She's pushing like a banshee. Where do you go to have this baby? Or you're not going to have a baby so, in a parking lot. Where do you go? No. 
Well, you're not going yeah. home. No, I'm not going home. We're not going to my house either, which is an hour no. away. Um, my husband's great. He's not that great. Then <laughs> um, I'm like, okay. Oh, Rita. Rita had a baby. So down seven minutes from us is what's called the Boonville Apple Farm. And this is a okay. family. This is like third generation apple farmers, salt okay. of the earth people. Okay. Rita and Jersey had a baby with me two years prior to this day. Okay. And they have these like little, um, these little cabins that they rent out. Okay. And they, and then they also have these like little gypsy wagons that they rent out. Because they also do weddings and they Pioneering. do Pioneering. I can kinds picture of it. Stuff. Yeah. You're on the, you're uh, on the, the, the West yeah. trail. I get it. I get yeah. it. So, so I call Rita. I'm like, oh, I bet Rita would let us have a baby at her farm. And I'm like, why? Yeah, I'm just going to call Rita. So I call Rita and I was like, hey, Rita, I got a really strange request for you. Um, I'm down here at the Grange, you know, just five, <laughs> seven minutes from your house. And I have a mom. We were going to go to Santa Rosa, but, um, but she's I pushing. We're going to make it. She jumped out of her car. I'm at the Grange. By now, there's a CHP, California Highway Patrol that is pulled in and thinks we're doing some sort of drug deal or something. <laughs> and he's like scoping us out. And the husband <laughs> is like walking over there and he's like, and he's like, well, I got to stay here until you leave. And it's like, okay, whatever, dude. Then he followed us to the apple farm. I don't know what he thought he was going to do. What was he going to do? NRP? Give me a break, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? You're like now a you lurker. Guys, you guys it's see like now why I had to have her come on and tell this story. I was going to try to like, like sum this up and like make a post. And I was like, no, no, we have to do it all the way. And we've already gone through one whole hour of Instagram. So if you want to go back and hear the rest of the story, that'd be so good. Though. crazy. But here we are. So you get back in the so car. So Rita says to me, <clears throat> Rita says to me, she says, uh, yeah, but we have an event today. So we're all full up, but she can use my house because I'm going to be cooking oh all God. day. Oh, my God. What a generous home birth mom. Oh, my God. Only, so then in, we get only there. in midwifery. Yep. Uh, we get there. Now, you got to understand, Rita is an artisan. Her home is filled with linen sheets, hand-woven wool and jute rugs, so imported we have moved velvet in sofas. It to um Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop magazine yes that's what she's and, moved into yeah. okay she made yeah and I'm like I'm like okay so I'm like okay we got to go into Rita's <clears> room <throat> which is a small little room and then her crib for her older kid is there I enlist the teenager we get there jump out I grab my my one my get out because when you transport I put everything in this one big bowl that I needed and you know what's really amazing is that like midwifery, all of this stuff that we bring will be processed down to one small little mixing bowl of like yeah. a Doppler, some lube, one pair of gloves, a Dali. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you some know, instruments. it's like, yeah, it's so, just, simple. Yeah, so, so simple. So simple in simple. the end. Yeah. When birth goes so well, I tell it's them, so simple. Yeah. So I tell the teenager who's like a little crabby that, you know, we had to get in the car and go to the city. And I looked at her and I was like, you, you're coming with me and you're doing what I ask you to do. And you're going to feel really great about yourself and have a story to tell your friends. And she said, okay, Miss Lisa. And so she gets out of the car. We head in there. I stripped everything off the bed, everything out of the floor, everything and shove it into the crib. And then I just tell her, I was like, go get my birth stool. Go get this, go get that. She says, Okay. The mom makes it in. She hobbles in. She's pushing in between. Yeah. yeah. Then she's like, uh, so then I'm like, oh, I need to call my assistant. So I'm like, oh, that would be good. She can rejoin the team. So she, I call her and she doesn't pick up. Why? Because she went horseback riding with her daughter. Oh. When and you at go the time out of that range. I called her. The time that I called her, her horse had been tied to this little post at this little corner store, and it wasn't a stable post. So the horse went freaking nuts, 
pulled it out of the ground while the other two horses were attached to it and went running down the highway. <laughs> I feel like we just went back into the old west. Like that's I don't what know I feel what's like happening, it's happening in this first story. You might as well be in covered wagons for this story. Like we went like to the neighbor Rita's house to have our baby and the horses got loose and <laughs> oh my god. Yes. Oh, you're killing me. So she me. takes okay. her horse home and her daughter and her friend and their horses, calms everybody down with a bunch of rescue remedy, probably a shot of whiskey. I don't know. And, and then, then she, she calls me. gets the call. She actually right? texts me. She texts me and uh -huh. she was like, oh, I see I missed your call. Um, is she pushing now? And I said, yeah, she's pushing. It's and like said, a movie. So it's they like gave her movie. Pitocin? That's what and is. I said, no. <laughs> no, no. They no, didn't no. give her Pitocin. <laughs> Apple farm. That's all I get out. I'm like, I'm like, apple farm. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she's like, they gave her apples. <laughs> I was like, no, oh. I am at the apple farm and she is pushing her baby out at Here. Rita's house. Yes. And she exactly. says, what the fuck is going on? And I was like, <laughs> And so I texted her and I was like, why don't you get here? And you can find out. I'll see you soon. <laughs> yeah, I love Shauna. So then Shauna. Oh, my God. So then Shauna shows up. And then this mom proceeds to push for five and a half hours. Oh, my God. Lisa, you are like, you are, you are ah! a special breed of midwife. So, um, again, I'm going to go to this place. Like so many yeah. midwives have cutoffs for pushing two hours, yeah. three hours. Yeah. Here we are. It's been five hours. You're in a new location. She's obviously making progress, right? She is. Which is super slow progress. progress. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm guessing this baby rotated OP. Is that what happened? No. Nope. just It was super deflexed. So it super was deflexed. Deflexed. Mm -hmm. okay. Tons of, tons of cap it. Military because presentation. Yeah. Yep. Okay. She was born right. LOT. Um, so great at that five the hour whole time. Mark, were you at least, were you seeing head? Like yes. when could you? Yeah. You, okay. So you, let me see. So you knew it was going to happen. <laughs> My last page of charting is like so short because it was like, at this point, Crazy. I even wrote in my chart, I'm not exactly sure how this birth is going to end. <laughs> But so far, everybody's vitals are doing well. Oh my God! Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. That's okay. So everyone, that's how I charted that. If you have questions <laughs> about this decision making process or this wild birth, <laughs> please type them now. We're going to answer yes. questions at the end. Yeah, yeah, we wish we could see yeah. your face too because this is hilarious. You yeah. can see my face. I'm laughing my ass off about this. So you could start yeah. to see head. Four hours into pushing, five hours yeah. into pushing, like, how um, long is this okay. taking? Okay, so let's see. I get to Rita's house. Oh, so I was looking at the wrong page of charting. We get to Rita's house at 1240. 1240. Uh-huh. And she had, that was noon 40. And that, and the previous day at 5 a.m., she was nine centimeters. Whoa whoa yeah 20 nar, nar. Nine, 29 hours of nine centimeters or complete waiting to push and then she's finally pushing yeah and so she pushes for hours we're still at great fetal heart tones <laughs> really good is... blood pressure and pulse her pulse is like steady her pulse is like yeah i'm a good 72 like the whole time <laughs> She, this woman is made of steel. Like, I'm just like, wow, right? Okay, so then. Well, that might be why she didn't get the baby out. Steel. I know. It, at a certain point, I was like, so I did midwife's forceps. Yep. So we did midwife's forceps to get it under the pubic bone. Yep. Lock and, and load is what I call it. Lock and load. Lock and also, load. Because you look your like fingers. a. So you yes. can't feel anymore. Like I've bowed tendons yeah. in my hand, like where I couldn't yeah. even use my hands. This yep. is why you take other people to a birth because once yes. you work to get that baby out, you can't always yeah. resuscitate them like they need because your hands yeah. don't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always take more people yep. to a birth. 
than you think. Yes. So your assistant gets there. She's still pushing. She's obviously making progress. Mm -hmm. Then she's at what eating. point do you the know mom is the eating. baby's going to come out? Yes. She's so eating at, while she pushes. Um, okay. She's eating while she pushes. We also do this like butter with honey and cinnamon in it. Yeah. Get some, um, pro like, some, some yeah, glucose. Yeah. All of that mm -hmm. other kind of stuff. So um, by, let's see. Which page am I on? This is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> okay, here I am. Okay. Um, 2.30. Aren't you guys glad you joined me for this conversation? This is a conversation Lisa and I would have anyway, but we just decided to make it public. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> 2.30. We're doing midwives forceps. Coming under 3.15. Some head visible with push. That's while doing midwives forceps. Okay, so you're not so in the depths. That's visible in, in the, the depths. depths. Yep. 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 Um, the birth stool by now. Okay, so three thirty, three thirty. She's on the birth stool, pulling up like just full curl, like just like uh -huh. Uh -huh. pulling herself up. We're like, oh god, she's gonna take flight. Like, you know, it just, and I'm like rubbing her. She gets in this rhythm where she's like, she moves forward. She's like, Lisa, rub my belly. I rub her belly. She gets a contraction. She pulls back. She bears down. And we do that until the baby is born at 4.22 p.m. Wow. Wow. L.O.T. presentation. Wow. No Never rotated suitors. away. Nope. Super deflexed. Mm-hmm. Mac, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fluid coming with this. Mm -hmm. Mackie fluid. Heart mm -hmm. tones are good the whole time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once the head is born, no dystocia, slips right out. Mm -hmm. Short cord, and thirteen inches. Oh, interesting. And how much did this baby weigh? Eight pounds, one ounce. And she was. And this was a primate. The, she was a primate. No. She required no sutures. So her left um, labia majora was split like this. Yeah. But no bleeding. And um... <laughs> there's Rita. Gil, the really? Rita's on the call. Oh, oh my Rita. God. <laughs> and girl, my house was clean when I got home. She's saying, oh my God, I love this. <laughs> Your community is showing up for you, Lisa. Your oh students here God. and the mom. I love it. Oh well, so, yeah. So let's finish this. Yeah. Thing. Baby came out. Baby was yes. happy. Pink. No problems. Yes. No resuscitation Pink, needed. No resuscitation. Mom um, didn't need pride. sutures. No. Pride no, nurse. There was no, um, there, the, her labia, it was swollen, obviously. Huh. And there was no bleeding. There was so nothing to, like, really it. suture. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. So um, she got to bond with her baby and snuggle and yes. nurse in, yeah. in Rita's bed. Thank you, Rita. We on Rita's you. floor. On, on Rita's floor. floor. Yeah. She chose this little, were. um, she chose this little space between the bed and the, uh, the, the bed yep. and the uh, crib. Crib. Yeah. This is Classic. like little, yep. oh, and the stepdaughters got to see the baby come out. Oh, was it magical? It was. Everybody cried. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then I what even did you do? Cried. What did you do? Did she get in Rita's bed? Did she go home? No. Did she go on so to then the, like, she, um, so then she uh, bonded. Placenta came out. No problems. No hemorrhaging. Just, like amazing. Um, what else? Um, she took a shower in Rita's outdoor shower. So um, awesome. She had some food. She had a newborn exam. She went home three hours later. Drove like home. a birth center. It's like she like went a to a center. birth center to have her baby. Yeah. Well, the joke is, the joke is that this baby is so bougie. She wanted a destination birth. <laughs> this baby wanted a destination birth. She wanted no a destination birth. birth. She's going to go to enough. Rita's place where they charge oh. like, you know, 
Oh my couple God. hundred dollars to stay the night there and feed you. Yeah, well, yeah. like Crystal said, oh, and then Rita and her plan. husband fed me. Yeah, then I oh, took a fed. shower. I took oh, a shower, my. cleaned up everything. I took a shower, changed my clothes, and then Rita brought me food. Oh my gosh, Rita, you have a new business model here. This is, I know. You know, this is serious. This could change the world. Oh, Lisa, I'm so yeah. grateful for you coming on and yeah. chatting us up. Like, you are always such a joy, so <laughs> much fun. If you're coming to the Midwifery Wisdom Experience in Galveston, Texas, you want to hang out with Lisa. She is leading the abdominal palpation skill. Mm -hmm. Where's she's the baby epic at? midwife. Yeah, where's that baby? She's an where's epic midwife, and she's the best storyteller I know. And <laughs> here, so funny. here we are. What an incredible story. I'm going to um, put the picture up one more time so people can see this epic baby molding. But to mm -hmm. do that, I have to yeah. say goodbye to you, my love. Yeah, Thank it was so nice seeing so you much. again. And yeah, if anybody has any questions, um, if anybody has any questions, just like yeah. send them to find me on, on Instagram. Media. Or yeah, totally. yeah, find me on social yeah. media. And um, yeah, and I stand, I stand by my plan. I stand <laughs> Well, and it, it worked out, right? And a it lot of times out. it does. A lot of times it does. And the, yeah. the key piece, mm -hmm. just to wrap up the midwifery yeah. piece, the key piece is there's good vital, good vitals. The heart tones are normal. Yes. The mom's yeah. vitals are normal. Yes. And the parents yeah. want it. We're not leading yes. them. They're leading us. When those yeah. things are true, really almost anything is possible. And you yeah. sure did prove yeah. it. Like, yeah. my God, so yeah. epic. And well, so don't I'm forget... Gonna, to chart yeah and chart chart don't chart. be Defensive responsible for, for sure. other people's choices Woo. amen don't well do so it. i need to say <laughs> goodbye to All you right. so that i can put this photo up for people to see one more okay. time sounds good and it was thank great you, telling thank the you, story thank you thank you you're the best oh okay. you're the best it's reciprocal <laughs> okay see you later okay what do Bye. i do xl is that what yeah. i do yeah so, yeah okay, you xl okay okay, okay. <laughs> We're trying to make this work. And now let me get you this photo, y'all. It's so incredible. Um, what, what an epic journey this midwife had and this baby had. And here we go. Check that out. Check that out. This baby molded and rotated and squished it himself, herself through um, the pelvis in the most awkward position possible. First a brow presentation then converted to a military presentation, super deflexed, um, ended up coming out LOT. So if you want to follow Lisa, it's Lisa underscore Rawson underscore LM. Um, she's just posting now. You can go follow her. She's an amazing midwife, been doing it for years in many different states and many different um, types of licensing. Uh, Mountain Valley Midwifery is her business team, but she is about to be a midwife on the road. She's about to do amazing things. She is thinking about traveling midwifery. She's thinking about launching new businesses and birth centers and all kinds of things. So she's definitely one to watch. And we have got her at the Midwifery Wisdom Conference this fall doing skills and drills with us. So um, I'm going to be in Texas in a month. I hope to see you all in person. Um, if you haven't yet, there are still tickets for the Midwifery Wisdom Experience. That's midwiferywisdom.com forward slash experience. And we still have a streaming tickets as well. So if you can't make it in person and you want to watch some of these amazing presentations, come check us out. Thank you to everyone. I appreciate you all so, so much. It's been amazing to share this story with you all and to connect. And we'll see you next time. Take good care. Bye, everyone. <laughs>